Well, we're back again with the um, 350 boat engine here, and so I kind of consulted with a buddy of mine who uh, has a hell of a lot more experience building engines than I do, um, which means he has just experience in general. <laughs> and so um, anyway, he was telling me that um, basically he recommended that I pressure check the heads and the easiest way to do that and basically the block when you do this but um my understanding is that you know basically this passage right here is for the water pump obviously and that goes into this jacket here and then that jacket kind of runs you can see right there right here right here all this and that that is one side of the block you know if i would split it like right down here 302 style right 302 ford style <laughs> And so um, then the other side would be this port and all of this chamber. So um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the old head gasket, I'm going to put it on, and then I'm going to take the heads and I'm going to put them on, and then I'm going to torque it down. Um, I'm just going to basically put it on there. I'm going to kind of clean this up, but, but pretty much just put it on there. And then um, also I'm going to take the... Um, this actually I got this gasket right here this would be the water pump gasket for the face right here and I have no idea if that's the right one but it looks close enough and so I'll do that and I'll put a blank piece of metal over the face of that so that I can actually block that off and then basically I'll fill the side of the block this one in, in this case full of water and I will right at the very top put an air chuck location or I might just fill it with air I'm not sure if I'll put water in it but basically check for leaks that way so um, that's the plan um, I've never done this before so we'll see how it goes um, probably gonna be a lot of mistakes along the way but at least this is a way to you know uh, ch pressure check um, the head and uh, also the block I guess so anyway um, we're gonna start digging in see what we can come up with it's kind of gonna be a you know, basically a custom deal as far as just finding a way to make it work. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so for the first step here, I'm going to kind of just take this whole port and get this kind of cleaned up. I don't have to have it perfect, but I do have to have it, you know, somewhat clean. So there was a bunch of rust and bullshit stuck up inside here. And then this gasket, you can see uh, there might be the, yeah, the gasket's still sitting there. So I'm going to shave that guy off, get these both cleaned up and looking sweet. All right, <clears throat> so I got some consultation from the pros, and uh, basically my buddy said that the rod journals are supposed to measure 2.100 inches, and that's what they measure using a really crappy caliper. So I'm gonna I'm gonna double check that tomorrow, and then these are supposed to measure the main journals are supposed to measure 2. 449 inches and so I checked that again same crappy caliper and so I really could only go out to the not th uh, not thousandths of an inch I only could go two hundredths of an inch so they were right to there but I really would do want to make sure make sure so no big deal and then I sent him a pic of my um, pistons kind of the the skirts right here were a little scuffed up I didn't know if that was a big deal or not and he said no so we're good to go. So um, basically going to um, order rings um, and bearings for it. So not a big deal. That's good. So um, now I can kind of move back on to what I was doing earlier, which is my extremely technical fabrication right here. So I have my um, gasket right there. This is the gasket that goes right there so I'll take him and I will trace him out and then I'll cut out the general shape doesn't have to be perfect because this is just for fun so I'm gonna do that and uh, see what we get all right there we are 
<laughs> fabrication hashtag fabrication so i'm gonna go cut that out um extremely crudely with a sawzall probably and then drill my holes through it and see what we can do with that all right look at this creation right here nothing but the straightest cuts <laughs> with the sawzall so um i'm gonna get those holes drilled in there and we'll see what we have so one more thing that I did really quick is there was just a lot of rust in this thing. So I tried to kind of blow it out of there so you can see it's all on the ground here, this rusty, you know, crumbly iron pieces. So I got most of that out, I think. I have really no idea <clears throat> if it's all out of there. And then here is my um, cover. So you can see that fits up real nice. Honestly turned out kind of cherry. So... Uh, even deburred it a little bit, so looking good. I'm going to go find the bolts and try it out. So real quick, I had to get this um, timing cover face pretty well cleaned up. Still a little, whoops, a little, little touch-up to do there on the doll pins. Same over there. But uh, for right now, I'm going to try and place this sucker on there. And uh, tough to do with one hand, so one second. Well, there it is. Installed. It is very ugly. Got my gasket inside there, but it'll work. So, that's what we got going on. I'm going to make a similar one over here. It's not really the right gasket. The guys at the parts store gave me the wrong one, but who cares. So I'm just going to cut it, make it work. Do my thing, cover up this other one, and go from there. Alright, there's another one. Got them both on there. Sealed up. Sealed up. So that should work nicely. <clears throat> so now there's, as far as my uh, understanding goes, there is no way for coolant on this side to get across from this side now. So um, that would normally be through the water pump. So now this side should be like its own little four cylinder over here. So we're gonna um, try stacking the heads on there, see how it goes. I put my head gaskets back on. These are obviously used head gaskets. And you can tell which side's which because this side's got the round holes, whereas there's the round holes. So you just match those up, slap them on there. And I don't guess I'm not aware of a way to um, a way to know which one was which side. So I'm gonna try and pay attention, but it might not be super obvious. So I don't think it'll matter. But anyway, I got those laid on there now. So here is two of the head bolts. One of them, that one there, I got all cleaned up, got all the thread sealant cleaned out of it. And this one here, you can see all the whoop, thread sealant still left in it. So I just Chucked up my wire brush and not the perfect one, but a wire brush into the drill press, and I'm just gonna hold these up here and clean out the threads. So just want to make sure there's no junk or anything that gets in there. I'll rinse them off in the parts washer prior, so you can see how caked full they get. So anyway, that's gonna take a minute because there's like I don't know, probably like 15 head bolts or more on each side. So. <clears throat> That's the next next thing I'm gonna do here. Well, I got this head on, all torqued up, looking good. So here's my other set of head bolts right there. And those are cleaned off. I got my um, thread sealant off of those. So basically how this goes is there's the long ones and they go on the, you can see right here, this, this actual boss is elevated and this one's down low. So all the top ones or all the middle ones, those are the longest bolts like this. Then there's two mediums, that's this one and that one. And then all the shorts go across the bottom here. And so basically what you're going to want to do is take your thread sealant. And this is going to be almost impossible to do with one hand. But you want to take some of that. And I'm going to just do this off camera, dab it up real quick. Okay, so I applied my thread sealant here. So I'm just going to chuck it in the hole, no big deal. And I'm going to do that to all the bolts. 
Then I'm going to torque the head down to 65, starting right here, and just kind of working out all the way around. Um, yeah, so that's how that's done. Um, not too complex, but just takes a minute. Alright, the second head is on there now. So I believe the only things I have to plug up are this passage and that one, and then the same on the other head. So I'll do that. <clears throat> I'm here to hopefully tomorrow, maybe. Hard to say, but anyway, that's how that's done. This is all tor torqued down. And then I think I know why all that rusty garbage was coming out of these ports. I mean, obviously it's a cast iron head. But uh, I was like, man, I don't remember it like flowing out when I emptied it. And I suppose that's because I didn't have any of the head bolts undone. So when you disrupt these head bolts on the bottom of them it's probably all caked up with rusty garbage so then when you undo that it crumbles and falls in there and then makes a mess so that probably is what's going on so anyway no big deal I'm going to uh, hopefully fi <clears throat> finish this up as soon as possible so I can get a parts list together and hopefully that parts list does not include a block or either head <laughs> so anyway um, we'll get those little plates made tomorrow. It'll be very similar. I got some more of these curved, screwed up blanks from work. So that one I'll just cut and get that in there. And we'll be good. So, see you tomorrow maybe. Well, I'm back with the boat engine tonight. <clears throat> Wasn't able to really do any wrenching, wrenching. Because um, I spent a little while here with a, I grabbed a 2 inch to 3 inch micrometer from work and I've been just kind of taking some measurements off of this crankshaft here just to make sure that it still is in you know good shape or hasn't been previously machined or anything like that so um, <clears throat> there's the measurements I took so that should be good I think the nominal for the mains is 2.449 so I'm like 6 tenths under 5 tenths under 3 tenths 5 tenths and then a little bit more this guy I might recheck that bottom one 244.79 but that's the thrust um, bearing that's the rearmost one and then the other ones the rods the rod bearings are on the right and those the nominal is 2.100 so I'm like under by 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, and um, 11 tenths. So anyway, uh, looking good there. So um, that makes me feel good. At least we don't have any scrap iron there. So um, I also went to work and used a quarter inch NPT thread to make a tapered thread for this guy. So I just put a put a port in a... Um, piece of metal there and then that guy I'm gonna bolt up right here and then that port's gonna go right in there so I'm not positive I'm gonna use compressed air but that's kind of my idea so anyway um, it's my understanding that the the thrust being you know the unusual of those that that doesn't sound too alarming that that one would be small but anyway <coughs> excuse me so that's kind of where i'm at um prick out here a little late tonight so it's probably all i'm going to do for tonight but um at least got some progress made and didn't find any any huge issues so that's good so um we'll see what happens next all right so another week night here got the boat engine i did some sweet high precision <laughs> high precision fabrication look at that cut razor sharp so <laughs> anyway i got my uh um port screwed in here you do a npt style thread and then i got this guy plated off that's the water pump entrance right there one of the one of the entrances and then this goes to the intake manifold and then cap this and then on this side also there's a little port for the water jacket right there so seal that all up I have my um, head bolts all in and torqued with thread sealant so um, and then these these bolts right here let's see maybe I can get the camera under there Oop. maybe you can see that bolt going through that goes through to the oil to the to the valley so um, you don't need any thread sealant there 
um, and then same over here is my understanding. So um, anyway, I actually did have this aired up just a minute ago. And so the setup on that is I have um, a leak down tester that I used on my truck a couple of years ago when actually the valve stem seals went bad on it. Um, or I thought they were going bad. I replaced them anyway. But anyway, this is a leak down test you can get any old place, probably at like O'Reilly's or whatever. So here's line pressure coming in. It's regulated down, and all I'm really using this for is the regulator. So it comes out of this line, regulated. And then I want the air to stay in here. Um, I was hoping it was going to like seal like really, really well, um, This these aluminum plates, but they just don't kind of. And I'm um, not really sure why that is. It just uh, is not cast iron. <laughs> it's not like strong, so... Um, or not flat or many other things so anyway what I have is this this kind of gender bender piece here and so that allows me to um, actually air this up so real quick got that guy in got this guy in and so it's regulated um, what are we at uh, 70 psi so not quite line but it's, it's a lot of pressure so anyway, it's bleeding through it's like sneaking in between the the head and the and the plate right here. So that's that's where that is. And there was a little little spot here um, where it's not sealing. But besides that, really what I'm looking for is I had water in the cylinder. So I got a spray bottle, and I'm just going around here and coating everything, and especially going down in all the ports, down in the exhaust ports. Because again, how would you get water? into a cylinder you could have a cracked block you could have a head gasket that's gone bad you could have one of these um the exhaust could be cracked between the water jacket and here and it dripping down where the valve was open so those are the kind of things that i'm looking for same with the intake to crack there so um basically i've gone over this whole thing once already uh sprayed it down with the soapy water and then if there's a you know if there is a leak you get a you get bubbles forming which let's see if I can get it to do it here so that's like obviously a horrendous leak right there um, but anyway see I put a lot of soap in it to get it to to really bubble and I think it works better on the stream stream mode here let's try this So yeah, I've been all over this thing already once and didn't see anything. You know, that would indicate some sort of a failure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these pieces off and put them on the other head, except this guy I'll leave cuz I made two of those on well not accident, but I'm just just did it. So anyway, so this guy, I'll move over to here. That guy, I'll move over to there and we'll try this again on this side. But I even, I even flipped the motor over and sprayed up into the cylinders because the cylinder bores are empty right now. Right there. So I tried doing that too and nothing nothing doing there. So um, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, trying to be really thorough because if you miss it here, you are screwed. So um, really trying to do a good job. But um, again, I'm kind of a noob in this, this department So as far as this diagnostic stuff. So... Anyway, thanks to my buddy Bryce for uh, kind of guiding me through this. Appreciate it. So, anyway, uh, hope this helps somebody. This is how you kind of pressure test an unengine block. This happens to be a 350, but um, I basically the same principle could work with anything. You're just going to be making some garbage, you know, with your super nice cuts and go from there. So, thanks for watching.